Ja, 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 ja,
obviously I had to buy that. But then it, I started having fun, so I started drafting other varieties on. As I got the sound, I grafted it on. My daughter-in-law was showing people and telling them about the tree. My grandson looked at me and says, oops, you can't call that an Anna anymore. It's got so many things on. Let's call it Steve. So that tree is now called Steve. Right. Is there any cross that you can't graft? Yes. You can only graft kind to kind. So you can graft apples to apples, pears to pears, stone fruit to stone fruit. Stone fruit is peaches, plums, nectarines, apricots, plum cots, pluots, apriums, and there's a new plums, plum supreme, or plum scrumptious. It's another one. You can graft all of those onto, onto each other. If you look at the seed, that's an indication of what you can do. But there's always an, an exception. You cannot graft a cherry onto any other stone fruit. A cherry can only be grafted onto cherries. Hmm. Uh, it's got to do with the chromosome numbers. Very technical, but that doesn't work. Sometimes you get uh, incompatibility. Uh, this neighbor of mine who's got all the avocado trees, um, he does a lot of interesting stuff. And he had a peach tree with fruit on that had been growing and it was a nice big tree, properly fruiting for a number of years. And he backed his ute up and touched the tree and it fell over. Huh? And it broke off clean like my hands here. Graft incompatibility, which manifested later in life. So if you graft a pear and an apple onto each other, often they work and they could grow for a number of years. They could last. Or it could just drop off right in the beginning. If it drops off in the beginning, you can fix it later, can't you? Or regraft, or then then you put something else on. Like if, if I put an apple on a pear mm. and it doesn't work, then I know that apple doesn't work. Then because I want, to, I'll try a different apple and see if a different apple works. There's hope for you yet. <laughs> <laughs> what what is so? You want to know what my percentage of success is? Between zero and a hundred. <laughs> Sometimes. Complete failure, sometimes everyone goes. Now, okay, I, I have to admit, I'm a horticulturist. My wife is not. You can see where I'm going. We bought 10 rootstocks, uh, stone fruits rootstock, and we're doing double grafts. So the, the two plums that work together are put on, and then two different pears, uh, then two different peaches, and things like that. So the plum wood is really hard. So I did the plum grafting because it's really tough, too tough for my wife. So she does eight double grafts of all the others. I do two double grafts of plums. My plums, each one has one growth growing. The other one failed. So I have 50% success. My wife grafted eight of them with two each. They all grew. Oh, wow. She has 100% success. I didn't. <laughs> so don't feel too bad. If you haven't, if you haven't had uh, failures, then you haven't tried. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. like baking a cake, I suppose. You can yeah, be really a good at baking a cake, but one day you just have that flop. Yeah. Yes. You mustn't have had any love. <laughs> she must have put oh, love into it. Oh, come on. You can't be like that. <laughs> no, my friend's no He's a scientist. Love. <laughs> I'm, I'm such a loving gentleman. <laughs> my family know. Don't upset mum until dinner's cooked. Until dinner's cooked. Oh, that's the way to go. Oh, that's the way to go. Right, so these are the tools that you can use. Cleaning alcohol. Um, you can use methylated spirits. Um, you'll hear that I say methylated spirits because where I come from, we call it ethyl. So here we say methylated spirits so that you know what I'm talking about. Um, this is a, a grafting tool. I'll demonstrate that in a few minutes. The grafting tool is only good for hardwood. Do not try this on, a mang on, on an avocado. It just squashes the avocado. Uh, this is a grafting knife. If you buy it and it looks like that, that's a budding knife. If it has this extra uh, blade there, that's a grafting knife. And the grafting knife is used where you have a big plant. So when you do a, a top work, when you graft a, a big tree, new um, variety onto a big tree, then you have to open the bark. And this here is to open the bark. Uh, we'll, we'll have a look at this again a little later. 
I'll explain that to you. Um, the grafting knife and the budding knife is sharpened on one side only. It's beveled on this side and flat on the other side. It is like a chisel. So it cuts on one side and it pushes away on the other side. So you get a cleaner cut if you use this. You can use these, not a problem with these. You can use them. They do work. Um, good secateurs. If you want to do very fine work, uh, we've got in the Rare Food Club where we have a gentleman who does micro-grafting. So he grafts things that are the size of this, plants that are that thin, and he uses a blade. Wow. He uses a shaving blade, a razor blade, but these are just as good. This is a, a scalpel blade, a handle, and then these blades, you buy these blades, non-sterile blades. You can buy the non-sterile blades, 100 in the box, they're cheap. So you can use it a couple of times, throw it away, not a problem. Blades are also used in uh, tissue culture. Yes. But then, then you've got to sterilize everything. Okay. And then we have a sharpener. This is the, uh, it's a diamond sharpener. It's the Falco 903. Um, this is Victoronix, which is also the same as Falco. So sharpen your blades. The, your blade has to be as, as sharp as a razor blade. The sharper your blade, the better quality cut you will have. When you're working with plants, if I cut this one plant, and it, it has a virus in it, I use the same tool and I cut another plant. I'm transferring the virus from one to the other. We all know about that now with COVID, we all know about viruses. So that is why between each tree you sterilize. So if you're going to work on the same tree, a couple of different ones, then it's not a problem. So we'll sterilize them now. This here is a butcher's glove. If you are concerned about cutting yourself, you can use get it buy yourself a butcher's glove and it's going that's fine. I don't use it, but uh, I need to demonstrate it. So and should buy a better quality. Instead of this alcohol, we can use a Dettol one or not? Uh, the the Dettol bottle? Uh, no, not Dettol. No, not Dettol. no. Uh, some something like uh, isopropyl um, alcohol or uh, methylated spirits uh, or even um, uh, bleach. Mm. You can use that, but then you've got to make sure that you get it all off. Now the beauty of uh, alcohol is that it, it evaporates, so. I spray a bit on there, it will evaporate. If I'm in a hurry, I'll just take a tissue and wipe it clean. And also if I take a tissue, any residual material that is on the bl uh, blade will come off. So there's a little bit of green there that from the last work. So I take it off. So my blade is nice and clean and clean. That one is clean. So what are you using in your bottle today? Uh, this is alcohol. Um, one of our customers uh, does a bit of... He's got a still at home. Oh, wow. <laughs> so he... The, the, and when you put your, your material in and you start your still, the first volume that comes off contains a lot of ethers. It's mm. very unhealthy. Extremely unhealthy. So that he puts into a bottle and he brings it to us. Oh, so, <laughs> so that's why it's called cleaning alcohol, not drinking mm. alcohol. <laughs> I would Smells probably nice. not die if I put a bit of that in a little orange juice, which, which I'm not going to do. <laughs> right. There are a number of different graph techniques, um, and I'm going to show you a few of those. Are you all with me? I have an English teacher when I when I was mature I went and did another course and then we had to do English as well and she would always say are you with me are you with me so are you with me so yeah. far so good so far so good right so this is an avocado seedling um, I'm going to demonstrate a few things on the avocado seedling so what the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to harvest some uh, asylum. And when you're looking for a sign, is there something special that you're looking for or just yeah. okay. Yeah, 
the sign that we want is the one that has not started growing yet. That has got the buds swelling. And if you look at that one, you can see it's an avocado and you can see the buds are swelling. You see all those buds there? They're yeah. swelling. They haven't opened up yet. When it's at this stage, where is one? This stage. This, whoopsie, I wasn't supposed to break this. <laughs> the bamboo. Um, this is too late. You can see it's all pushed out. Yeah. That's too late. You don't use that. In, in mangoes, I'll, I'll show you uh, exactly when in, in a mango you do it in a mango. Now with your deciduous plants, which are the easiest to do. By the way, apples are the easiest to grow. Huh. So what you do is get yourself an apple tree. I'll uh, harvest some uh, sound for you. And you can work on that. That's the when once you've got success, nothing succeeds like success. So you try apples, and the best time to do your sound is in winter when your um, stone fruit and your apples are dormant. They've got no leaves on. You cut your sign, you put a little bit of uh, moist paper towel around the, the bottom, like that, moist, moist paper towel, the bottom, and into a plastic bag and in the cooler, in the crisper of your fridge. Remember, not the deep freeze, the crisper, crisper drawer. You can keep them in there literally for months and they'll be fine. So you harvest your sign, um, you go to your neighbors and you see we've got nice apples. And in winter you say, oh, you, yeah, this, this branch, oh, actually I think you should take this branch off. Take it home. No, ask them nicely and give them a sign. Put them in the crisp, keep them there. And as soon as your rootstock starts pushing new growth, graft onto that. The best time to graft is when the sap is flowing. And you'll know when the sap is flowing when the bark lifts. I'm going to show you. I hope the bark lifts on this one. This is very young, so it hasn't got proper bark. So it might not work too well, but let's see if, it, if I can show you what it looks like when the bark lifts. And I'm going to put my reading glasses on when I do this. Thing. You're getting serious. <laughs> now I'm getting serious. Right. So if you make a cut and you lift the bark, you see how easily the bark lifted? Yep. Look at that. Beautiful. Lifts beautifully. The only part that grows in a tree, in any plant, is the cambium layer, which is that shiny bit that you that you see on the bark and on the wood. You see that shiny bit? Yeah. Yeah. That's the cambium layer. That grows. Now the cambium layer, those cells multiply by division. I like that. They multiply by dividing. So, and that's the reason a tree can grow bigger. Because the cambium layer, the cells multiply, and all the uh, bark, the, the material on the inside forms wood. On the outside, it forms bark. Now, plant cells have got total potency, total potential to become anything. So, if you take a, a branch and you take the leaves off, um, Long way around. The avocado is not a very good example, but if you want to make a cutting, you do that, you grow the cutting, the cambium layer starts forming callus, a white growth, and those white growth cells then differentiate into roots. Those that go down become roots, those that go to the outside become bark, those that go on the inside become wood. That's why you can make cuttings, that's why you can grow. And uh, that's why you can do tissue culture, because in tissue culture you can take a single, just that little bud there, extremely small bud, and you can get that uh, in sterile conditions, and you can get that to grow, and you can grow a whole bunch of plants out of that single bit of material that you've got, uh, in, under sterile conditions. It is because of the total potential of each cell to become whatever is needed. Right, so the first graph that I'm going to demonstrate is the wedge. Uh, I'm going to use the same sound uh, because I'm going to use different. A wedge graph is simply that. You cut a wedge. You can see that I'm not pushing the blade, I'm cutting. Look at the action, the mo you see the blade is moving. So if I just push, I'm not cutting, but if I go like this, then I'm cutting. So a nice sharp wedge. You can see it's a nice sharp wedge there. 
-hmm. We've got a nice sharp wedge there. Now we've got to get that wedge into the in, into our rootstock. This is the scion and this is the rootstock. So now I do a cut in the middle here. Now you'll notice that my fingers are not there. I've cut between my fingers. If this slips, it's very sharp. If this slips, um, I could bleed quite a bit, which I wouldn't like to do. So, and once again, you'll notice that first thing, I clear, clean this up, because even though I use the blade, the one side is the blade that cuts, that side is the anvil that just pushes. Even though I use the blade, there's still a little bit of um, squashing there. So I clean that up and then I cut in the middle. And I'm, you can see the rocking motions because I'm cutting, cutting, cutting in like that. And that's about as deep as I need to go. I take the sound and I push the sound in there. Now, the interesting thing is here. The sound is of a smaller diameter. That was not very good. The sound is a smaller, of a smaller diameter than the, the, the rootstock. So if I put it in the middle, it will not grow. Because the, the, uh, the, the cambium cells are not touching. You can see there no cam no contact with cambium cells between the sound and the rootstock. But if I move it to the side, over there, now you can see the cambium layer of the rootstock on that side and the cambium layer of the scion will be in touch. Okay. Even though it's not in touch there, it will heal over. And that's what you want, you want them touching. Cambium layer must always be in contact. Okay, so that's a wedge graft. The other graft, um, this is a very patient rootstock. The other graft I'm going to show you is the um, side veneer. So if you have a, a fairly big one, um, like this here, you want to put another branch in here. Uh, we'll do a side veneer. So the side veneer is you make a cut into the wood. This wood is very soft, so I've got to be very careful. Cut into the wood like that, and then open up the box so that I get the cambium layer. Then I cut my roots, my scion, and a shortcut on that side. Now the, the scion then goes in there, and then I check that the cambium layers are in touch, and I bind it up, tie With. it up nice and tight. With? With tape. I'll show you the kind of tape that we use. The crafting tape. Grafting tape, yes. A grafting tape, not the kind that you buy at Bunnings, that's very tough. Um, Bunnings has got other very good stuff, but that is not a good grafting tape. <coughs> um, roses and citrus are normally bud grafted. Now, bud graft is when you take a single bud and you put it in. So, I'm going to do a, a, a bud here. So, when you want to do a bud graft, you make a tea cut. Uh, normally you leave some leaves or a, in this case a branch. You won't cut the branch off completely. You'll, you'll leave some uh, nurse branches or nurse leaves. But when you do a bud graft, you make a tea cut, which is a horizontal cut like that, and then a vertical cut. And this is where that that bit of the uh, grafting knife, it's to lift the bark. So you lift the bark. Now you can see I've got a pocket there. So I take a single bud. And I don't touch the, the area that I'm going to use. So I take the bud. Put it in there. You can open it up. Now I move it down. I can use my knife to slowly move it down. Now I'm going to cut the top off. My handle, I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to cut the handle off exactly where 
a cut in my rootstock is so that even that little bit of um, cambium layer that's at the top there that cambium layer will now be in touch as well oh, okay so you're doing top and bottom well I've, I've got it I, I cut it from the bottom, I've got the handle at the top, I push it in mm. and you can see it's in there, sitting there. Now as soon as the cambium layer starts multiplying, it's going to form callus on either side of the, the cambium layer. So it's going to push that thing open and you'll, you'll have a, a wide open wound that will not retain the, uh, the, uh, your, your, your sign but that you put in. Normally I have a thin, I have a wide, this is the narrower one. We couldn't get the narrower one so we had to buy it. So this is grafting tape. Take a piece of grafting tape. So you can feel that this, this is grafting tape, it stretches. Okay. So now I'm going to close this up. You can see I'm pushing it down, I'm, I'm pulling it tightly. I've got to make sure that I close the top really tightly so that if when, when the cambium layer starts multiplying the color callus forms the callus doesn't open the wound but actually grows into each other so the, it, so the wound will heal and you can go over it a couple of times it doesn't matter as long as you make sure that it's nice and tight we've got that. Now the problem is that little bud can transpire. So it can lose all its moisture. So put a plastic bag over it or uh, you can get uh, parafilm. Parafilm, um, this parafilm is laboratory stuff. It, it's used in laboratory for sealing. Uh, but if you go on the internet and you order buddy tape, B-U-D-D-Y, buddy tape. It is the same material as this part of color. So you take a piece of paraform. Paraform is biodegradable. So this tape you have to cut off after a couple of months. This stuff you don't cut off. It's very thin and uh, just cover the the bud and it's self sealing so there you go it's sealed and that is a graft so those are some some of the techniques that we can use the um, when you go when you go study your horticulture the first graft that you taught is the splice which is just exactly that you cut it like that and you cut your if you're on the road, just drop in here and um, you can drive right in and catch a new, you know, privately. Uh, just, just to, to make contact. Oh, that's... And the sergeant that said, look, you know, keep in touch. So that was a bad one, so we'll do a new one. And, and get anyone involved if you don't have So, to. that's a splice. So, you've got your rootstock, the wrong way around, but this is not growing up. So, this is in the ground. You take, and you put them together so that the cambium layer starts. Now, at my age, I've only got two hands. If I want to put my tape around there, I can't. So, what I do is, I do a... a tongue and groove. So I make an additional cut into there. You can see I'm once again rocking the knife and I'm supporting it with my index finger down to there. I take my scion. I do the same with the scion. Backward, back, back like that. And now I take the scion and into the rootstock where the cambium layers touch. Make sure the cambium layer touches the east, east side. Now the tree is standing. Now I can use both hands. Right. Any questions? What's oh. your favourite type of graft? Tongue and groove. Tongue and groove, alright. Yep. The reason for that... The, the, yeah, the, the reason for that is the cambium layer is the only layer that grows. So if you do a splice, that is the number of cambium cells that you have exposed. If you do a tongue and groove, you have those, 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 and those. So many more layers that 
and this is what happens when you do a tangong rule. So if you look at this, this was a wedge graph. It's just a wedge. Yep. So I'll go and fetch a. This one here is a Fuji and it's got a, a granny on it which was done on the 13th of last month. No, no, not last month. The month before because it's December now. Right. When you have a. We, we spoke about rootstock. The dwarf rootstock have got smaller roots. Um, a tree can only produce at the top what it can get from the bottom. So the, this volume of roots is in comparison to the volume of leaves. So uh, root dwarfs have got smaller root system. So they're not very, they, they can't become big trees. Uh, in some instances you want a bigger rootstock. So what you do is you take a, a, a nice big rootstock like this one which will produce a big normal size tree. Then you graft a dwarfing interstock. Hmm. So this this so this is the rootstock, this is an interstock. And the interstocks for some other reason always come out dog leg. So if you go and you see a dog leg one, you know that's got an interstock in it. So this is a super dwarf tree. It's still a dwarf tree, but it's got a bigger root system. This here, this part here, actually breaks the growth of the tree. Not not breaks it off, I mean, like in retarding. It slows down the pressure. Slows down, make it smaller. Uh, B-R-A-K-E, not B-R-E-A-K. So, at least I know some English words. Um, right, so that's the idea of that. You get different rootstocks for different things. You also get rootstocks for better uh, working better in sandy soil, you get root stock developed for clay soil. So when you buy trees in WA, they all develop for sandy soil unless you spe specify that you want one for uh, clay area. Which ones are the best ones for clay? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm, I don't know. Uh, Who do you get in contact with to buy like just the root stock plants or do you just plant your own seeds and hope? Uh, if, if you plant your own seeds, you're not exactly sure you don't know what, what, it is. what size is going to be. But what, what does it matter? Because you. So it's not like a fish tank where if it's in a pot, it's not going to grow. It's, it's exactly. It's exactly the, um, the smallest apple tree that I've seen um, is about that tall. It's got one apple on it. It's a it's bonsai. Oh. So you can bonsai. You, you can take an, a, you can take a standard size tree. And just prune it down and keep it in a pot and bonsai it, it'll work as well. Uh, so this this here, uh, I'm going to open it up to show you that things done always work out perfectly. But is there like a special supply for rootstocks that you need? To get back to the rootstock, um, yes, uh, you can buy rootstock if you have a, an orchard. Yes. And you've got to harvest on the same week. So you have to have the rootstock that's exactly that is going to produce a tree that's exactly the same size, that's going to f ripen at the same time. Then then you buy rootstock. Okay, otherwise. Um, rootstock is not easy to get hold of. Uh, we were fortunate. We members of the Red Fruit Club, and one of the members had a whole lot of uh, red red leaf nemagod, which is a rootstock for citra uh, for uh, stone fruit. There is one that's. Growing at the bottom, I'll go and fetch that and show you. Now, this the <laughs> no, 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 you're right. I'm, I'm happy to stand. You, if you, if, if, you, if you look there, you'll see how it's healed. Mm. Yep. And that's only by a month. But yeah. you say that's failed, or that that looks no, good? It's 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 okay. It's not it's not perfect. The sandpaper will come out well. <laughs> <laughs> because you can see that. It's open there. Yes. Oh. Actually, it's it's grown a bit. What I did is, um, I opened it up. I saw that it hadn't touched there, so I cut uh, the the rootstock and the sign again, and then tied down again to be in, in contact again. So it has healed over. Mm. It hadn't grown there. So. Hmm. It's better now. How long does it usually take for you to see if it's successful or not, or it just it really varies between trees? Um, it de depends on the tree and also the time of the year. So in, in growing season, it's quick. Um, when, when we start grafting now, it's going to slow down the, the 
the, the uh, result is going to be slower because we're not into the main growing season. As soon as we get a bit of rain and a bit of uh, cooler weather again, it'll probably uh, assist it again. If it's too hot, it won't grow quickly. If it's too cold, it won't grow quickly. But in between, it grows. And um, you can work on moon calendar as well, if you're that inclined. Um, I am that inclined. Um, Is your wife? No, that's me. Uh, that's what I was wondering. I was like, oh, wait a second. <laughs> but then sometimes I don't consult my calendar. <laughs> um, so, um, plants, you'll, you'll notice that plants uh, push leaves and then they seem to stand still for a while. They're not standing still, they're pushing roots. So, when they're pushing roots, it's not a good time to graft. So, as soon as the roots have completed their growth and start pushing lots of nutrients up then you can graft again. Mm -hmm. This time of the year uh, I am told that you can bud graft uh, avocados. It's not a good time to graft avocados but apparently bud grafting still works this time of the year. I haven't tried that, I'm trying it now. So next year I'll tell you whether it's true or not. Zeki, could you um, could you graft a Japanese box? Yeah, the Japanese box, the box, the hedge. Yes. What uh, what what do you know the, the genus and species of that one? No, not off the top of my head. I've tried uh, a couple of times, but I've failed. Right. So um, you can only graft kind to kind. Mm. So if you have uh, a prunus, you can graft a prunus onto that. Yeah. Most times. Okay. Uh, sometimes not, but mostly you can. Mm. Uh, there, You've always got the exception. Like in citrus, you can graft any citrus onto citrus, mm. but then you can graft kumquat onto citrus. Mm -hmm. Kumquat is not a citrus, it's a fortunella. Mm. But they're so closely related. Mm. Uh, mulberries, you can graft your uh, chatut mulberry onto white mulberry. Uh, white mulberry is not, a, it's not the one with the white fruit, it's um, Morris uh, alba. Or is it Nigra that you use? One of them. One works and the other one doesn't. Um, so you can try. Um, but it, it, uh, if you can get a, the, the same genus, um, a different species in the same genus, you could try that. Sometimes it works. Uh, sometimes it's even further apart than that and it works. Sometimes it's so close to the right and it doesn't work. This is the one that I actually wanted to show you. Oh, wow. Is it healthy tree? Ah, yes. I can't get it. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is a golden delicious tree, and I added Granny Smith to it uh, with tongue and groove. So, if you have a look here, you'll see the tongue and groove. Oh, wow. You want to take a shot of that? Huh? So, I smile, thumbs up. <laughs> Can you, you want to get a shot of that? I can see. Can you do that to anything, that type of graft? Yes. Yes. Um, like roses or something? Yeah, you can do it with roses as well. Um, roses do grow very easily from <coughs> with, uh, bud grafting, with a single bud. Um, commercially, the roses are used. Yeah. Commercially, they, they go so quickly, you not your cutting or your rose cutting. Like that, uh, then you bud graft, you bud your bud on the top there, put your bud in there, put a clothes peg around, put it in, in your uh, propagating unit, and it, it roots and it grows. So you save a season. Uh, if you want to do that, you have to have bottom heating to uh, activate the roots and keeping the top cool with mist sprays. And then earlier you alluded that there was something different between like the mangoes and the avos. Yes. Is it? I'll, I'll show you the, the, the mango, uh, the right time to uh, do a graft the mango. That's like my dream, a mango orchard. And then avo is probably like behind that, you know, you gotta have the avo on toast. <laughs> I have only mango variety at my place. Oh really? What kinds? Uh, it's mostly like uh, Asian variety. Yeah, yeah. So, so like mandok and... Yeah, one... The banana from, one? From East Alangda, it's from Pakistan and India. Oh cool, okay. Variety, and some from 
Thailand variety and Carabao. I am not sure which country is from. Carabao is from uh, Philippines. Philippines. Oh, yes. Alfonso is uh, from India. If, if uh, a lot of Indians ever come and say the best man in the world mm -hmm. is Alfonso. So I had two cu couples, one of them had to come in, oh, you've got Alfonso, it's the best in the world. And what does it taste like? I don't know, because all the good stuff is always exported. Ah, uh, <laughs> no. Then I got some other people come in and say, Alfonso, taking it, it's the best in the world. Because it's sweet and it's fabulous. Uh, and, but then the Filipinos come in and say, the Indians don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> Carabao, that's the one to go. Carabao, uh, it means buffalo. Oh. I found out as well. Some interesting stuff. This is that because of the size of it? Oh, it was taste of it. Taste, yeah. It tastes like buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Perfect. Well, yeah. well, I'm a kiwi, so we love Fijoa tree. Yeah. Uh, if yeah. you would, you didn't need to say you're a kiwi. When you said Fijoa, I knew. <laughs> <laughs> we say Fijoa, and you ah, say Fijoa. <laughs> Do you know that, but see, I can say I'm kiwi, but no one guesses the other half of me. But what my other half is. So uh, mouldy and then there's something else. No idea. What's the other half? It's hard from? to guess. No, people don't get it, they really don't. So what's your name? What? Vivi, Filipino, Samoan? No, no. To be real. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm just naming names. <laughs> I'm already really bad at Irish. guessing some words. Irish. 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 Oh well. Oh, 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 hence the red tinge. <laughs> Let's get to the now this here, if you look at that mango top there, yes. you can see that the but it's just starting to swell. Can you see there? Yep. Mm -hmm. It's just starting to swell. Now, if I wanted to graft this tree onto anything else, I would use it now. Because that is, as the bud comes out, that's the right time to use it. Okay. As in to, to, to graft to onto that? No, no, to use this, this as my scion. Oh, oh okay. So this, is, this is a sign that you use. And, you and any leaf would be all right, or you have to take that? Take, take all the leaves off and take the tip. Right. Because with, with um, mangoes, you normally graft the, a, 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 a scion yep. about that size. So the, the tip there, cut it there, take all the leaves off and graft it onto your rootstock. Mm -hmm. Okay. And like, would you be able to bud graft onto a mango? I've never tried it, but I'm sure Technically you could. Technically you could. It. Yes, it's just the same timing kind of thing. Yeah. Um, normally with, with grafting, when the bark is green, um, the bark is still young, mm. it grows faster, it's quicker to, to heal, and it's easy to graft onto. If you graft onto um, hard, something like this, mm. which has already got a very thick bark, um, the, it's not as actively growing as here. Gotcha. So it's diffi more difficult to get it to grow here. So here you make sure that you've got more uh, cambium layer touching. The, when you want to have, when you've got a big tree, what I did here is, if you have a big tree, you want to change it from one variety to another. Um, you've got a, a, an apple tree that produces apples, but you're not very keen on the taste of the apples. You want to put some other apple varieties on it. You cut the branches, but you leave at least one branch as a nurse branch. So you cut, maybe if I wanted to do it here, I would leave that one. Cut this one off, cut that one off, cut there, and then graft into that. So that's where you do a, a top working. That's then where you, you're going to work in hard uh, bark, and then you push your sound in very hard, bind it up very tightly, and make sure that you've got cambium layer touching. So in, in an instant like that, I would, what I did there is, I did my cut on the, on the side, not in the middle. I did the cut on the side, like that. And I lifted the bark. You can see, now, you can even take that piece of wood out if you want to, because the, there's the cambium there. Like that. Okay. In, instead of in the middle, um, like you do when you've got a thinner, uh, when you've got a, a wood stock with and then so say with like the receiving mango it doesn't really matter that time like as long as the other one's doing that bud that just goes on that's that's a good time to, to harvest the bud and to, to grow and what normally happens is 
and your own avatar is are very close to the same growth period. Right. Yes. So you take this off, which means that it's starting to grow. Yep. So it's it's pushing it, it's pushing uh, so sap at the moment. Yep. Yep. Mm. And same thing with the avocado then? Does that avocado, have the yep, avocado, same thing. Um, you can, you saw this one, the bark is slipping. Yes. It's a good time to graft onto, the, onto this one. Yesterday. Awesome. And the other thing that you could never forget to do, you have to label it. Yes. <laughs> when did you do it? And what have you done? And what have you done? <laughs> So, this here is a green. This was done to the 1st of December. And there we go. So when that one grows, I'll know that I've got a green. Perfect. Otherwise, <clears throat> it might be anything. Right. In mango, we, do, we can do the soft grafting. Yes. yes. <clears throat> I told you not to use this on soft wood. <laughs> because what it does is crushes it. it crushes it, it squashes it instead of cutting it cleanly. You see how it squashed it mm. instead of cutting it But in, in hardwood, like in, in, in for instance, your uh, apples and, and stone fruit, it's beautiful because then you just push it back in or the one onto the other. And you've got contact all over. Oh, really? Perfect. So this is only for hard. Okay. For hard wood. For hard wood. It's like a more success for hard groove, hard wood, or like a soft groove. Um, it depends on what you're going to do. Um, your stone fruit normally the, the wood is hard by the time you work on it. Um, like and your apple as well. You can see that it's mm. already got wood on it. Um, it. It was already hard when I when I cut it. Um, this this mango sorry Fruit. this mango in, is too soft. But in saying that though, you did say that the the apples had more percentage of succeeding. Yes, yes. Easier. Yeah. Apples are the easiest to graft. Yeah. So they they just they just like it. It's What's the hardest? Hard. Also, sorry, here you go. Mango is a bit harder, or is it that's one of the difficult ones. Mango is to me that's the difficult one. I don't want to be nursed now for if, a few years. Now, if you have a, a difficult one that you struggle with, then you take your the one that you want. Well, this is the one that I want. And this is the one that I've got. Mm. So what I do is I bring this one in close. Like the neighbors. Ah. Uh, you know where I'm going? Yeah. You see where I'm going? Yeah. So what you then do is this is the branch that I'm going to even be be my tree. So I'm going to cut the open here. And I'm going to cut the same size size open here. Ah, and bring them together. Bring them together, bind them in very tightly, keep them there for a couple of months. What I then do is I start scratching the bark off this one um, at the bottom. Is and it while it's entwined? Or? The, 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 the one that, that's actually uh, giving the, the, the one that I'm going to keep. Take so because this is, it is in contact, imagine it's in contact with the tree over there, like that. So as soon as it starts growing, I start scrapping, scratching the bark here, okay. which actually uh, makes it think it's going to die. It. So it's going rejuvenate. to rejuvenate it. And when once I see that it's thickened here, I can cut it off. That is approach graft because you approach one tree, approaches the other to do an approach graft. So that you can do, especially with difficult things like mangoes. So if you have your mango here. Um, and you want the, the this is the bamboo. You want the bamboo onto your existing one. You put your bamboo there. You bring it up close. And you cut open, cut open, and bind it together. Yeah. Even if they are in a pot. Even if they're in the pot, even in the ground, doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh, okay. Imagine it'd be far easier in a pot <laughs> to bring the other one there. <laughs> no, 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 no. The the one is in the might be in the ground. The other yeah. one might be in the pot. So Normally the, the one, one to the pot. The, the, then you take the one in the pot to the one in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Because <laughs> I've got like a really old, I think it's like Fuente next to like a good house yes. and it's like 25 year old trees. Yes. But the one has been like strangled by like this climber. Yes. So all the branches that you know actually reachable are yeah. dead. Yeah. 
Yes. So now I'm like, oh, maybe I should try uh, graft like that. Yes. That yes. bark and. Yes. So, so what you could then uh, do there is. Um, Maybe I'll steal the hass from the other the other tree. Well, you don't want a you, you want a because you want to cross pollinate. You, you want a, a, a bee variety on there, so you get another bee variety. So what what you can do is on your rootstock. Yes. Um, I'm going to you, you make a cut, and then you take the size of your scion. You cut the size of your scion like that. You lift the bark there. Yes. Okay. Then you do it. Uh, well, actually, the, I should do it the other way around. You know, you, you, you're going to graft the branch, branch in there. You want to graft the branch in there. Yep. And then you take your scion and you cut your scion. Okay, there's some more ones Like that. Yep. So that you have cambium, cambium. Yep. Put it in there. Okay, and then of course, it'll only open up. Yeah. And you, you see? Yep. See the idea there. And then wrap it. And I'm assuming, like, you want to, because avocados, I think they're sensitive to light the first few years, so you need to, like, protect them with 50% yes. screen. Um, the, in any green wood on avocados and mangoes are susceptible to sunburn. So uh, you protect the green bark against sunburn. Right. So when I got my avocados, I put a screen um, around semi shade semi circle screen around them because the morning sun is fine it's the afternoon sun that really kills uh. i don't know if i move that you can see me um, so protect them against the afternoon sun um, then last year my avocados decided they're going to flower but they dropped every leaf on the tree <sighs> every single leaf so sunburn definitely so i took some cheap white paint uh, water-based paint diluted it a bit more and painted the whole thing white as a sunscreen. My trees are white, but they're alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And now they've flowered again and uh, I might even have some fruit. Last year we didn't get a single fruit. So okay. what's your favorite tasting avocado? Right. To answer that question, I grew up in Namibia. <laughs> Bacon. <laughs> no. In, in Namibia, um, in Uchu, when any fruit arrives there, it's been on the train for at least a week. Okay. <laughs> so there is no such thing as a mango or an avocado. We don't know what it is. Oh, well, okay. So now if I see a mango, it's the good one. <laughs> if I see an avocado, <laughs> what a beaut. What a beaut. Yeah. Um, there are avocados that are better tasting than others. Um, of course. But you'll try them all. <laughs> yep, you'll try them. Um, is the reed the round one, the nut, really nutty, buttery one? Uh, the reed is the big round one. Yeah. Right. Can you Yeah. Um, the reed. The round one or the big seed. Um, has is the, the black pear shaped one. Lamb has is a bigger has. It's a shorter tree with a bigger fruit. Huh. The, the reason why you don't get things like Gwen, Fiote, um, Shepherd, uh, Santana, those you won't get in the shop because of the fact that the skin is too soft. When, uh, when trees are grown commercially, the fruit is picked just before they ripe. In they are in a state where they are ripe enough to be picked, but not fully ripe yet, so the skin is still hard. If you pick a hass avocado and you're standing up top and you put them all into this bag that you've got, they're lying on top of each other, pick a bunch and then pour them onto the conveyor belt. Yeah. If they move, they all get damaged. into woolies and they're still beautiful. If you try that with a, a Santana, before it gets to the conveyor belt, so it's it done. Yes. Yeah. So that's why you grow when you grow um, fruit trees for yourself. You grow the ones that are not commercially available, mm -hmm. unless you only eat hash. My daughter-in-law only eats hash. But then, year before last, my woods had one fruit on me. She cut it in half and kept half for me until I came back from my son in Queensland so that I could taste it. It's so good because it's from my own tree. <laughs> Yeah. Um, when the fajoas are ripe, you can go to Spring Hill Orchards in Rolleston. Mm -hmm. uh, my neighbour Mike grows, amongst other things, fajoas. Mm -hmm. Okay, fajoas. Uh, and, and then he takes them, still, still tastes the same, he takes them to Spring Hill's Orchards. Mm -hmm. So you can always just check to see what they've got. Uh, they've got at the moment, they've got um, peaches and apricots. 
then they'll have a whole it will go through then Mike will bring in his uh, pajawas he'll bring in his uh, figs mm. um, and then when all of that is gone they've got the persimmons coming in as well huh. that's amazing rolling stone yeah. it's a place you, to be you, you do get varieties of fajawa um, there's white goose there's a duffy which is a grafted one um, White, the white goose here were grown from cuttings. They were from a, from, a, from a commercial grower. You can grow pajawa onto pajawa. So you can get different varieties of pajawa and get them onto each other. I've only seen one. <laughs> pajawa, uh, Mike has got a few different ones. He's got one that's a fairly big sized one, and then I've got one that's uh, like, like a, a, a golf ball, a round one. That's the one I want. I asked him, I said, what is this? He says, I don't know. This this is the one that I really don't know. We bought it. He says he went to Bunnings once and he saw these. They decided, no, that's interesting. And he bought it. So he's got there it. There you go. Um, and he's got the best fig in WA. It's a big black fig. Beautiful. When it's ripe, you take your bread, put a bit of butter on it, and you just take that fig and you just smear yeah. it over. So we actually has to do some grafting, not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So are you going to try your hand? Right. Enough talk. Action. Give me a try. Right. Yeah. The idea is, if you buy a tree, I'll harvest budwood for you, and you can graft it, and then you can put as many grafts on as you like. So if you want an apple tree with three different apples on it, you can do it today. If you want a peach tree with a peach plum, peach plum, apricot and nectarine on it, you can do it today. I have a different situation, I guess. So I um, inherited, I guess, a um, super dwarf sunset nectarine, but the person who had it obviously did not know what they were doing and they let the rootstock come, it came from below and just took over. So the graft is completely dead and not alive anymore unfortunately so I've got a root stock and I'm trying to figure out what to do with it yeah hack it off and put something onto it yeah do what I do I'm going to fetch a plant that's got root stock coming out so we can talk about that it's awesome that you have to try and take care of something you've been yes yes I know I've um Otherwise, it's just not really bad because I don't think it's ever going to fruit either. It's not not no, it's not. flowering. Or oh, even if it does, then it, it'll be fruit's crap, not meant to be. Yeah. Yeah, does so it need a Does it need a partner? Like I, mm, I don't or? think so because uh, it's supposed to be self-pollinating. But yeah, rootstocks commonly don't fruit, and if they do, it's not not very good from what I've heard. So yeah, um, that's yeah. what they tell you. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> so you don't grow the rootstock and then create your own Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they come into business. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But no, I think, yeah, in this experience, I think that's true because nothing's, nothing's happening. It's all beautiful and green. Someone's taken it. My two fijawa trees, the ones in the pad, it took 13 years, but then once I got the other two that yes. back, now they're flowering. Well, this one isn't, like, it's doing nothing. It's just green. Right, so... Is it in a pot or in the ground? In a pot. I do, so I brought it to them. Uh, yeah. Probably. You should have, but there's a graph it for you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I have it in the back of my car. There's a class I, tomorrow. Yeah. I, I was going to say that. Oh, really? <laughs> so you have many children for tomorrow as well? Um, I'm not sure how many. I think three. Said they come. But if you want to come again mm. tomorrow, yeah, yeah. and you want to bring something, you want to. Yeah, because uh, I want to bring that, because uh, my yeah, owner, he planted that mango tree like 20 years back. Mm. But now he want to demolish you the house, and he want to remove the so tree as well. But the tree, mango taste is delicious, like one of the best mango. But I did grafting like 8 to 10 times last year, but they all failed, because I was watching YouTube videos yes then I did a different techniques like the air layering which yes. I think is called different it, name it, in uh, air layering, air layering. Mar Mar yeah. is the old word for me yeah. yes so I did three but one of them was success yes. oh, wow. I a root. oh so you created yeah so oh. it was a good experience for me at least nice so yes. Yes. this year I did 10 to 12 on the same tree but I'm not sure that's that the air layering air layering, air layering. Uh, the, the trick with air layering is keep it moist yeah. Make sure. Um, okay, so we we're just going to digress a bit yeah. onto air layering. Yeah, awesome. I'm interested in that too. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sorry, but I drink like this thing. Oh, okay, tin foil. 
around it and then you glad wrap well, yeah, like soil. The, the reason for tin foil is to keep the sun off. Um, leaves are positive phototropic, they grow to the sun. Mm. Roots are negative, they mm. hide from the sun. So if you have the sun shining on it, it says, oh, I can't grow here. But if you make it dark, then the roots say, this is lovely, I'll grow here. So that's a good thing to cover. When you do um, marketing, air layering, you uh, cover the, the roots. Now with air layering, if you, I air layer this one here. I've got, oh, to air layer, do you know how to air layer? No. Okay. You um, ring bark the tree. Um, so you take the bark off. Let's pretend that this is part of grafting. <laughs> so you take the bark off completely, like that. Now if I cover this now, if I put a um, cocoa peat or something like that around here, and I cover it, this will heal over because the cambium is still there. Mm. So what you need to do with air layering is you scratch until all this shine is, shiny bit is off. If you look at the difference where I've scratched and where I haven't scratched, can you see that it's yeah. shiny and not shiny? Yeah. And so you, you take all of that, you scratch all of that off. Yep. Around the whole thing? The whole thing, all, around, all the way around. So that there's absolutely no cambium that can um, form a bridge. Um, then you put your um, a plastic bag or a um, yogurt tub, cut away yogurt tub, put it around. A margarine tub, anything or a spread, we call it a spread here, a spread tub, but anything around it. Put your coir in there or a bit of uh, cocoa peat moss. Cocoa, cocoa peat, peat moss. Uh, you could, could you use just normal soil or is there a reason that you wouldn't? Normal soil is, is not so good for rooting. It, it, you, need an, you need a more open material. Okay. Like uh, seedling mix will also work well. Okay. Then you cover it up, you keep it moist, cover it up, and then darken it. Now, if I'd done it here, this would be my tree. So the roots that I have here will be that volume of roots. Yep. Do you think this whole tree can be supported by that? No. Nope. So what you do is prune it back. So you have a smaller tree to start with. Uh, I did that with uh, mango and um, it's working beautifully. So before you cut it off, you've got a fairly thick one that you've done. I normally don't go for thicker than my finger, maybe thumb thickness. Um, the reason for that is um, the cambium has to be um, juvenile to multiply. So an, a, on a thick one, um, they're more established. They don't want to multiply so quickly because they go, it grows much slower. In, in here, it's got to grow fast, so there's a lot of cambium activity there. So that's why you do the younger one. Uh, and then you cut it back. Um, any, any other tips that you want from that? Is there a specific type? Because obviously, like with the mango trees, as, my, as I understand it, they've got like a whirl of leaves in the same place, and they've got one or two, and it's like two to three months between those whirls of growth. Is there a special place that you'd try and aim to do it? Like, would you do it around the whirl where you'd assume there'd be more ability for the roots to grow because of that? Or? No, it doesn't matter where you do it. Uh, mango trees have got alternate leaves and then they've got a ring. Alternate leaves and a ring. Yep. That's the way mango trees grow. So when you prune a mango tree, if you cut it here above any one of these, the branches will pop out all over. Mm -hmm. If you cut it just above the ring, all the branches will pop out exactly there. You'll have a shorter, wider tree. It doesn't really matter. What I did is, um, I was very clever. I have to admit. Um, I have a, a mango tree and I decided that I want to put some more different varieties onto there oh, because the, the rootstock started shooting out. So I grafted more mangoes on there. On the rootstock? <laughs> on, on, on the rootstock, yeah. it's fine and they were fine. growing because now I'm going to have three different mangoes on the same tree. Then when I got a bit cleverer, I realized that the mango tree that I have is a dwarf. It's a king tie. I've got a two meters tall. Now my the Lenja Pride will grow five meters tall. Not a good idea. So I marked it at that. I took it off. And it worked. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. But it doesn't matter where you do it. Um, because you you take a, a strip of 
the bark off anyway. Uh, it will be good if you have, if you end with just, if your top cut is just above, uh, just below a, a leaf. Okay. Because that's your, your active. It's like grabbing. Yes. So if you cut it there and down. Yep. Okay, I will bring some mango branches tomorrow. If you will teach some other students, it's better to teach my mango tree. <laughs> <laughs> so at least I can bring <laughs> Okay, you, you, you bring what you can tomorrow. and uh, Because I have the big tree, but I don't have the potted one, so I will find potted one, the small one. Yes. Today? If, yeah, if, if you can't find a, a small potted one, it's going to cost you a lot of money because you're going to have to buy one to, to put that onto it. Yeah, yeah, no problem. No, no, no. And what we will do is, in that case, we will see if we can find one that's got a branch. Okay. So that we keep what what you're buying, if you buy an, an Alfonso or a Carabao or whatever, and then we put yours on there. Yes, do that. So okay. what's the deal today for if you buy a plant? Um, if you can we plant, practice? You can graft onto it whatever you like. So what would be the best, like, if, you, if I want like a dwarf avocado tree, what would be the best like mixes to have on that? Like, I'm assuming you'd have the lamb house as the base. Or... Well, uh, the dwarf avocados is uh, woods is the same dwarf. It's an upright whoop, weeping type one. Gwen is a dwarf. Lamb house is a dwarf. So uh, a dwarf avocado tree does not mean that it's going to be one meter tall. Just five meters instead of 25. <laughs> yes, it's a dwarf of that. Yes. But um, the other thing that you do is the way you prune them is to keep them small. My, um, I, I grafted a, a wood, a, um, a has, and I started off with two branches. And I took everything else off and I kept those two branches. So I've got a wide tree, it's short and wide. Perfect. Is it a good time to graft citrus at the minute? Yes, the citrus we can do, very easily. And the trick with citrus is, um, young citrus, we can go and fetch it and show you. Right, here we've got a citrus tree. Uh, this happens to be a an orange, Washington label orange. Yep. It doesn't matter whatever it is. If you have a look at the youngest growth there, you'll notice that the growth is angular. Can you see it's angular growth? It's not round. Yeah. You see that? Mm. Right. Angular is and that is angular. That's it hasn't got enough energy to sustain itself. So you can't use that to graft. If you have a look a bit lower down here, you'll see it's around. Even here it's around. Okay, gotcha. Can you see? Yeah, the ring. Can you yeah. see that the, 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 yeah, the plant is round? Yep. Instead of angular. Now I can take an, an, a bud over here. That's fine because it's, it's mature. That bud will have enough energy to sustain itself. That bud won't. If I take that bud, it won't grow. Another trick with citrus is um, you rotate and this is citrus. We're going to show you what I'm talking about. So this is the citrus we're standing there. I cut the leaf off. I keep Are the you this one? I am, I am. <laughs> I'm, keep, I'm keeping the petiole. I harvest my bud. I make my tea cup. Put it in, cut it there, and keep the petiole. The trick is in citrus, as soon as this, the bud starts growing, it forms an abscission layer between the wood and the, the petiole, and it drops a petiole. As soon as the petiole drops, it's green and it drops, your, gro uh, your graft has taken, and you can cut the top off. Okay. If that petiole becomes dry and brown, it hasn't, okay. it hasn't taken. Hmm. Let me see if I can find this. By the time I've finished talking, Matt will have his whole nursery down here. <laughs> <laughs> so what's that? Was that a line? Um, this here is a rootstock. This is uh, Citrus trifoliata. You can see the three leaves. That's a species. Okay. So if you, have, if you let this one grow and you take the fruit and you plant the seeds, you will get exactly the same. If you take the um, Washington navel seed and you plant it, you won't get Washington navel. You get something else. Because it's a, it's a hybrid. It's a cross. Oh. And that's the sandy soil rootstock? This, this, yeah. This, this is a rootstock that's Not stand, standard for us here. Uh, citrus trifoliata. Um, you understand why Washington navel will not be pure Washington navel? Something to do with genetics? 
Like they cross pollinate or something, yeah. so then the. Now, the, the Washington navel is not a species. It's a hybrid between two different or three different or seven different mm -hmm. varieties. Uh, just the same as if you plant golden delicious seed, you'll get an, an apple, but not necessarily golden delicious. Some plants you do get that, um, like for instance, your. Um, Reed avocado mm. comes very close to reed. It's an, always a reed like fruit, but not necessarily reed. Um, if you plant a seed of the uh, Kensington Pride uh, mango, you get a number of seeds coming out. It's what's known as polyembryonic. It's got more than one embryo in the seed, mm. but it's not the embryos that you have there uh, are not pollinated embryos. It is the, the um, cotyledon of the seed. That is actually growing, hmm. so it's like a cutting. Yeah. It's like a baby cutting. Oh, so it will be a good tree. Uh, but yes. But you you probably want a different rootstock for like the. Well, with with um, there are those mangoes there. Yep. Are all um, seedlings. Oh wow. And and you can use them, and we sell them as Kensington Pride because they will be Kensington Pride. So wow. I noticed that the mango seed is on top of the soil. The avocado seed. Okay. Oh, sorry, the avocado yeah. seed. Yeah. Is that safe? Or yes. do you need to protect that? No, you, you need to leave it exposed. Yeah, seventy percent under, thirty percent at the top, round about. Yeah, keep it exposed. Right. So this is a. What did I do here? Um, I had two on here. What happened to the other one? Come off. Nope. Somebody removed it. Twenty-seven ten. Twenty-seven ten. I did two. Because that looks like where you would have done this. One. This is now one of the failures. Somebody, um, was probably me for some other reason, tried a very, very thick one here. Although I would normally not work as thick as that. Mm. Now you can see here, the petiole is still there. It's very, it's fresh, it's still sitting. So it hasn't stopped. Nope, it's <laughs> gone. <laughs> now the petiole has dropped. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you so see? So that's it? what you're meaning when it's dropped? Yes. So the petiole has come off. So it's taken. Which, which means it's now, it's taken. So I can now take these off. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut these back. Keep some so that we still have the nurse there, still photosynthesizing, it'll grow. But you cut it back so that that one has a chance to come in. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Directing that energy. When you cut the top off, the plant branches. So it'll branch here and hopefully branch there as well. That was a good example. Yeah. And that's what you want to do. And you can see this is young wood. Why? Why is that young wood? Because of the angular thing that you're talking about. Yeah. Aha. 